Hey everybody, how are you? Good yom tif to you. I know you might say Sukkot is not till this weekend, but um, the rabbis tell us that the days between Yom Kippur and Sukkot are considered a holiday. And they're considered, the four days between Yom Kippur and Sukkot are equivalent to the four letters in Hashem's name. And it's very special because the moment we finish Yom Kippur services, we immediately go on to start celebrating the holiday of Sukkot. And the tradition is that we look for more mitzvot right after we finish Yom Kippur. And we bless the moon right after the services. And we also immediately begin building our sukkah. Or, if we can't build it because it's raining, we start discussing the plans to immediately continue and start a new mitzvah of the festive time. Ironically, this year we've been sitting in sukkahs outdoors the whole time. Well, maybe halachically it's not a sukkah, but we've been intense outdoors. I just want to say a thought, a little bit, share something about our high holiday season and then tell you a thought about preparing for Sukkot and a beautiful story that I told the people yesterday, those who were able to be with us physically. So it was an amazing season. With all the difficulties and challenges, never did I think that we would get so many people coming to all the different pods and different services and different locations. In fact, I had to plead with people. People begged me, Rabbi, could you squeeze me in one more person? And we were limited in numbers. And yet to see people through so much struggle and challenge, as we're dealing with this raging pandemic, want to just be in shul for a little bit to connect their soul with God it was so powerful. And it reminded me of the words that we say in the prayers. We plead with God that throughout the despite all the challenges, all the struggles, all the obstacles, we didn't forget your name, God. So don't forget ours. This is, what, this is what we pray to God, that throughout ages, throughout suffering, throughout Holocaust, throughout pogroms, throughout crusades, throughout wars, we've never forgotten the name of God. And today, even throughout the little challenges we've been having, we remembered God. I told him a story of this guy, Anatoly, who came into um, a Yom Kippur service in a Chabad house. And he had a, he had a machzor that he must have brought from the former Soviet Union. And when we say Avinu Malkeinu, which is one of the most special prayers in our show, we love it, we sing it so many times. In the first stanza, there is no king but ours, the second one, and then the last one, please do it for your sake, even though we're not meritorious. It's just very powerful. And Avinu Malkeinu is one of the most special prayers we have. So when it came to Avinu, says our father, Malkeinu says our king. So in his machzor, the word Malkanu was crossed out and it said the Tsar, our father the Tsar. And then the next time he crossed out the Tsar and it said our father, Avinu, and then under Malkanu it said Stalin. And then that was crossed out too. And basically Anatoly must have been a Jew who was trying to pray and connect to God under Soviet regime. And he knew that they were checking up on him. The KGB, the NKVD, they were following him. So he knew that if he wrote that he was praying to the Tsar, or later when it became Stalin, if he was praying to Stalin, they would allow it. But what was ironic was, and not ironic, but said so much, the word Malkainu was replaced by Stalin, by the Tsar, and probably throughout the ages by so many different ones. But the word of Vinu, our father, was never replaced because our father is one. And that's our father in heaven who loves us so much. And God must have looked at us sitting back here in the tent. Rosh Hashanah was freezing. In Kippur, the weather was nicer, but it was muggy with masks. Worried about making sure to be separate and social distance. And he must have said, these people, they're my children. I'm their father. And I'm going to bless them with a good and happy new year. And I know and I'm confident that that's what God blessed us with. In the Chabad, we have a fascinating tradition that after... Kaddish and Shema Yisrael and Hashem Olekim and we chanted at the top of our lungs and we cry out to God that He is one and hear O Israel and Baruch Shem Kavod Machotol Olam Ved before we blow the shofar we sing a march and the reason we sing a march is because we know we're confident that we're victorious with God and that He 
forgave us and that he gave us a good year because a father always forgives their child. A parent always forgives their child. And now we go on to Sukkot. You know, ironically, sitting in a tent, you feel the seasons. You're much more dependent on the weather because you sit inside, outside, it's cold. And there wasn't enough space, so we spread out in the grass outside of the tent. And this year you realize when you're sitting there as the season's changing and there's leaves wherever we were. I, I mean, from the night of Yom Kippur till the morning, the amount of leaves that fell was fascinating. And that always reminds us that Sukkot is not far away. And as much as our Father, our King, God, wanted us to pray and to seek forgiveness on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur and coronate Him as, this, as our King, that's how much He wants us to celebrate now on Sukkot. Sukkot is a holiday of Zman Sim Chaseinu. It's when God says you can accomplish as much with the joy, with the celebration, with the happiness, with the festivities, as much as you accomplished on Yom Kippur with the praying and the fasting and the crying. Think about the gift that God gives us. And this year we're all home, we're spending so much time at home, it's the perfect year to build our own sukkah. The rabbis tell us that the sukkah has a very special uniqueness to it. That it's the only mitzvah, other than mikvah for a woman, that we immerse our whole body into the mikvah. When you give charity, it's with your hand. When you pray, it's with your mouth. When you go to shul, it's with your feet. And you put on tefillin, it's on your hand, and it's on your forehead. But when a Jew goes into the sukkah and just sits there, doesn't do anything, or has a scotch, or has a herring, or has a cheesecake, or has a coffee, they get a mitzvah. And the entire sukkah embraces us and envelopes us. It's God telling us after the holidays, after we prayed so much, and we cried so much, and we pleaded so much. It's God's way of giving us a hug. He's embracing us. He's saying, I love you unconditionally, even through the struggles, even through the challenges. So I want you guys, we have, today's Tuesday. Sukkot is Friday night. We will have services. We'll try to have some sort of festive mood even though we'll be outdoors and we'll be dependent on the weather but I encourage all of you to put up a sukkah and if you can be in touch with me so at least you can come at some point into the sukkah and make a blessing and tell God you're hugging him back we love the blessings we have we cherish them and we pray for joyous times for all of us and boy do we need joy now more than ever. So we'll start getting ready for Sukkot. Hopefully we'll do another few before with some different explanations on the holiday interpretations. But for now, have a great day. Get to Home Depot and figure out how you're building your Sukkah. Chag Sameach.